Christian. It's Genesis chapter number 1, and we're going to read just verse number 1. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we're thankful to be into your house tonight, Lord. Lord, we're thankful that while, Lord, we know this is serious business. Uh, Lord, we know that while this is life and death every time we come in here, Lord, we're thankful that, Lord, that we have the promise, the hope that we're a blessed people, Lord, and that we know where we'll spend eternity, that we can also come in and laugh a little bit, Lord. Uh, Lord, get away from the world and just, Lord, have a good time in you, Lord, in fellowship and around your saints. Lord, I ask you just help me tonight what you laid upon my heart. Help me and be a blessing here to your people. Lord, and ask you just meet with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, by way of introduction, the first thing I want to look at as we see in that verse number one is we just simply see the first of everything. Uh, the Genesis is obviously a book of the beginnings. Uh, we see everything in Genesis is uh, the beginning of everything as we know it, so to speak. But the first before all that was God. In the beginning, God. Where did God come from? He was just always there. It was always God. So we see the first uh, that this all starts with, in the beginning of everything, God was there. Not only is it the first, can I say that it is also the foundation. Uh, for everything you believe, this is the foundation of everything. If you don't believe that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, how can you believe anything else? How can you believe anything that comes after that if you don't believe this? If you don't believe that God just always was, He always existed, and that He's always been there, and that He created everything, and we could go through and read the rest of chapter number 1 and all the things that God created, if you don't believe that, you can't believe everything that came after that. That is the foundation for all of our beliefs. And we, we can't by uh, no way can we misunderstand and misconstrue uh, that verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That means that that is a finality of everything that happened. That don't leave any room for something to have just happened. That don't leave any room for a big bang. That don't leave any room for anything else. It's the fact that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If, this, if you think this happened just by happenstance, uh, I, I, he, he's probably not prepared for this, so don't go to him tonight, okay? Don't, don't ask him for this tonight. I've already picked this up to get a drink, so I'm going to move it, brother, right? Because I've been instructed to do that. I won't tell you who. I'll just say I'll move it so I don't get nervous drinks. He might not be prepared for this tonight, but Brother Bob gave us something this morning that we read talking about the seasons. So if you think everything happened by Big Bang or you think everything happened by happenstance, you ask Brother Bob for that little piece of paper. He was going to try to cut him out and hand him out. Like I said, he might not be prepared for it tonight, so don't ask him tonight. Give him another week or so. But, it, but it's real interesting to, to read about how uh, the earth's tilt and everything about the earth all plays in part to the seasons. And if we were straight up, none of that would happen, Brother Ray. None of that would take place. You know, you think about everything that goes on, everything happens with a purpose. None of it is just done and just, ha just happens by stance. None of it is an accident. None of it is just, oh, well, how did that get there? Well, God did it. Right. We see the finality of all of that. Well, what I was focused on in, this, in, in reading this, and, and God touched my heart about this and was looking at it, and I want to look a little bit at that first word here. It says, in. That, to me, that just really, at the time that I read this, and who knows how many times I've read this verse, it really struck me that that is a, that is a direct, that this is at end. It doesn't say almost the beginning. It doesn't say around the beginning of time. It doesn't say sometime back in the beginning. It says in the beginning, completely in the beginning. That got me, Brother Phil, looking up that word in. That word in is used four different ways for the most part. Can I say first it is used as a preposition? That refers to a period of time, kind of like we are right here. In the beginning, a period of time. In the beginning, God created. You look back and think about your life. For me personally, I can say I met Jesus in 2011. You know, almost 12 and a half years ago now. Have you met him? You know, we can start off with that just asking, if you, can you go back to that time and you met him? But that preposition, the in, used as a preposition, it refers to a period of time. Can I say not only is it used as a preposition, it is also used as an adverb. An adverb means it's a movement to something to be enclosed. Think about this. If you go knock on somebody's door, and what do they tell you? Come in. 
that can be used as an adverb in fact of coming in can i say if you've met him how did that happen well in john chapter number six and verse number 44 no man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him and i will raise him up at the last day if you've met him aren't you thankful the fact that he invited you in Aren't you thankful for the fact that he asked you to come in someday and drew you in and pricked your heart and touched your heart by conviction so that you could be saved and we could be that blessed people today, uh, Brother Ray, and look forward to spending eternity with him in heaven? I'm thankful for that uh, come in invitation that I had one day. And not only does it talk about an adverb coming in of movement to something to be enclosed, well, you think, well, yeah, he invited me in, but what's that enclosed part? Well, I'm glad you asked. John chapter number 10, verses 28 and 29. And I, gave, and I give unto him them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I'm thankful, Brother Phil, that I'm in his hand, and his hand's in the Father's hand, and nothing is getting to me unless it goes through there, and nobody's pulling me out of that hand. I've gone into a place that ain't nobody getting me out of. I've gone into a place that no matter how hard somebody tries, Brother Brian, to pull me out, they ain't getting me out. They can pull and pull and pull, but they ain't getting me out of there. I am in all the way there to stay. Thankful for that tonight of what we have uh, and the fact of being in when he invited me in. Can I say this thirdly? The word in is used in an adjective. An adjective in the fact of being present. You think of the fact if we went over it and you could say whoever you want to, you know, we went over to, went over to Brother Phil's house, but no one was in. Nobody was present. Nobody was there. How present are we tonight? You know, it might be a little bit better tonight because it ain't Super Bowl Sunday. Maybe last week you was too worried about what was going on in the Super Bowl. You know, I'm sure nobody here, we didn't care who won or lost, maybe. Uh, so it might not have mattered. But how present are we when we are here? Physically, we're here. But are we truly all the way in? Are we mentally here? Are we too worried about what's going to go on tomorrow? How many, and I'm not trying to pick on young people, you know, I'll pick on everybody. You know, how many of you adults are sitting around, boy, I got this and this and this to do tomorrow at work? I got this list of things I got to make sure I get done at work tomorrow. Are we truly here then? Are we really in? Are we mentally somewhere else? Kids may already be thinking some of them have off school tomorrow. Boy, I already know uh, the video games I'm going to play, who I'm going to play with, Brother Ron, and we're going to do this and do that tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy my day off from school. Are we worried about that or worried about what's going on in here tonight? How truly present are we? So we see in used as a, as a preposition, as an adverb, as an adjective. And can I say lastly, this, this is the one that really got me. It is used as a noun, a position of influence. He had an in with the doctor. Can I tell you I'm thankful I have an in with eternity? I'm thankful that I have an in with where I will spend eternal life at. I'm thankful that I have an in tonight that I get to go to heaven. That I know exactly where I'll spend eternity. I know that when the devil goes to God and he wants to try to uh, bring all the bad things I do up, that I have an intercessor sitting there that says, no, 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 no. I know who he's trusted in. I'm thankful tonight that I have an in when it comes to eternity. Can I say, I got to looking at this word in, uh, uh, Brother Donald. I, I, honestly, I was thinking about, you know, you, you hear about word studies, and, and I know Brother Moore has done a couple word studies that have been a blessing. I had to start out with an easy word. So that, you know, that's why I went with in. But looking at that word in, in is an all-in word, so to speak. None of these things that we are talking about is a halfway there. There is, there's no such thing as being in and just being part of the way. If you are in something, you are in it. You are fully in it. I can't be, you know, I'm not present. I can't be just not home and home at the same time. There's not a going to heaven or maybe not or maybe is. There, there's no such thing as when you deal with the word in, it is an absolute. There's no halfway. There's no, well, well I was kind of in, but, or I was almost there, well, you know. No, it's, it's all the way there. So what I want to preach on tonight with the Lord's help and we better hope that the runway was way shorter than the message. Are you in? Pretty simple question tonight. Are you in? Now, like I said, just said, alluded to, there is no halfway in these questions. There is no, well, I am kind of. No, that's, then you're not in. Right. We can't answer with a well, kind of, or a but maybe. You're either in or you're not. 
Can I say the first question tonight, are you in? Are you in the will of God for your life? Can I tell you, each, every one of you sitting here tonight, from the youngest to the oldest, God has a purpose for your life. Are you in the will of God of what God wants you to do? Now, you can maybe say, you know, I was thinking about this. You can maybe say, well, I believe God's called me to do this or that, but right now, no, there's no but right now. You need to be exactly where God wants you to be right now, and that means you're in the will of life, the, His will for your life. There might be something later on bigger that He wants you to do, Brother Phil, but right now, are you doing what God wants you to do? I, I, I tell them at the jail this all the time. I believe it with all my heart and soul, and you're not going to get me off of it. I alluded to, God has a purpose for all of us. If God did not have something He wanted you to do, you would not be here. I believe that with all my heart. I don't believe God's keeping any of us around just because he has nothing better to do, Brother Donald. Right. So if you are here, God has something he wants you to do. That could be something as simple as being a witness to your family. It could be something as great as being the next great evangelist goes across this country. You might be the next great missionary to a third world country. You might be the next great Sunday school teacher at Emmanuel Baptist Church. You might be the next great wife, that, that uh, a preacher's wife, or next great... We have no clue... But are you, are you in where God wants you at right now? Sure. Right now, what is it that God wants you to do, and are you there? See, we tend to spend so much time worrying about, well, in the future, or this or that. No, God has something for you to do now. Right. Are you where you need to be now? Are you fully in on what God wants you to do right now? See, too many times we're waiting for something else. Well, if so-and-so will do this, or so-and-so will do that, or if, if the church starts this, or the church starts that, then I'll get involved. No, baby, you need to be the one to start it. God has something he wants all of us to do. Are you in the will of God for your life? Not anybody else. It don't, it, it's not based on anybody else, but you and God. See, we, we think that at times, well, you know, if so-and-so will do this, then, then I'll get behind it or whatever. No, what God wants you to do? God has something he wants all of us to do. Are you in that will of God for your life? Can I say this secondly? Are you in where you need to be with Christ? And you think, well, Brother Josh, ain't that the same thing? No, 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 no. In, John, in 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in the darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Are you where you need to be with Christ tonight? Are you in true fellowship with him? Now, you might think, well, Brother Josh, if I'm in his will, and that, nope, 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 you can be in his will and be out of fellowship. Right. Think about this. If any of you fellows didn't buy flowers on Wednesday, you could still be married. You might not be in fellowship. Yeah. Can I say this? How many times have we, I was thinking about this. <laughs> Brother Ron, is, I was thinking about this to, 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 uh, this past week, thinking about this message. And no matter how many times I try to convince myself of this, Miss Brittany, I never could get it. How come it's always the way it goes? No way would I come in here and say, wife, if you didn't do something right, you're probably not in fellowship. It's always us guys that mess up for some reason, Brother Donald. We'd never dream of using that illustration the other way. No, no chance will we think about it. But can I say, so you can, you're still married. You might not be in fellowship. It's the same thing with God. You can still be saved. You could still be in the will of God for your life. His job might be for you to be uh, sitting here at Emmanuel Baptist Church and doing whatever it may be. But that don't mean you're in fellowship with him. Are you in fellowship with him? Are you doing the things that he would have you to do? Are you reading your word? Are you spending that time in prayer? Are you spending that time with him on a daily basis? Are you in that true fellowship with God? Think of how many times do we go, and if you're driving back and forth to work or wherever it may be or, or to school or whatever, how many times do we just get in a vehicle and we're just fellowshipping with him because we love to be around him? Or how many times do we have to, God, forgive me, because I didn't do what I was supposed to do yesterday. And instead of being in fellowship with him, we spend half that drive or whatever it may be trying to get our lives right because we're not in fellowship with him. Because we've not been around him the way we should be. Are you in where you need to be with Christ? Can I say this thirdly? Are you in where you need to be with the church? We was talking, we was getting ready to uh, 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 sing up here a while ago, and Brother Phil told me, he was talking about going to church back in the day growing up, and he said on Sunday mornings we would have a big old crowd. He said on Sunday nights we would have 12 people. I was like, wow. Like, it's not that bad here, but where is everybody else? 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. We all know the verse. For not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. I'm just going to tell it like it is. If you're not providentially hindered and you're not here, you're not where you need to be with the church. I don't believe, Brother Donald, you, maybe it's just my opinion, I don't believe we can be all in and not be here. I don't believe that. I, I, I'm not trying to say anybody's not saved, Brother Clint, but I just wonder how much they truly love God if we can just skip church just because we don't want to come. I don't understand that for a minute. I don't get it, Brother Moore, for a minute. I it never crosses my mind on a Sunday or a Wednesday that I would just rather just stay home. Yeah. Look, I, I, most of you all know, hey, I love to play golf. I love it. Absolutely love to play. All the local courses and everything around here, when they would have their little uh, tournaments or things like that, Brother Ron, are almost always on Sundays. I've never done it. I could. I could. I, I, maybe somebody would or would not look at me different. I just don't want to, Brother Donald. I'd rather be here. Are we in where we need to be with the church? If we, if we can't come out on Sunday night or we can't come out on Wednesday night or we can only come out two out of four Sundays, we're not in. There's no way to beat around the bush about it. We're not in. And how much do we truly think absolutely that God can still bless in spite of us? He does quite often. But what effect do we think it has on the church when we're not in? What effect do we think it truly has on the church, even when I talked about a while ago about being present? What effect do we think it has on the church when we come in here and we're just going through the motions and while we're sitting in here, just kind of like being in the will of God but not in fellowship, we might be sitting in here, but we're not truly in. We're not truly involved in everything that we need to be or everything that we could be. And we begin to make excuses on why we can't. So oh, I've got this going on or that going on or I just can't do this. Really? I wonder at times what would our lives look like if God treated us the way we treat him sometimes. If God began to make excuses on why he couldn't help us the way we're not willing to help him. Are we in where we need to be with the church? There's a lot of things that, could, uh, uh, that we know there's a lot of people that take part in a lot of things at the church. That don't mean there's not still things that could be done. That don't mean that there's not still things that we could do. That don't mean that there's not, that it wouldn't take, you know, a couple people to, to maybe do something. Can I share this? I'm going to share this, Brother Aaron, since we had this conversation. I've thought about this before. Brother Aaron does a great job with our video and, and, and everything and our live stream and all that. And I told him, I said, you know, I would like to talk to Brother Doug about maybe uh, uh, being your right-hand man, so to speak, and learning more about everything that goes on. I said, because if you're on vacation... You know, we don't need to be bugging you if something goes wrong. You don't want us blowing up your phone. Hey, well, this isn't working, that's not working, and you have to remote in or whatever it may be. You should be able to enjoy vacation too. I was thinking this, but I wasn't about to bring it up, Brother Peter, but he did. And he's like, we're, we're, you know, he said, well, I'd see, but what happens if I die? I'm like, well, that's what I was thinking too, but it's the truth. What happens? That's, that's, I know that might be a terrible way to think, but what if it happens? And he has all the inside information that none of the rest of us know. What if that you? Are you doing all you can? Oh, Brother Aaron's got this. He's got it covered. And he's got a couple guys that, that will go up there and video when he's not there. And we, they, they have it covered. All the Sunday school teachers, they have everything covered. They don't need any help. You know, I just, just soon throw my kids on them on a Sunday school and just let them have it and not have to worry about it. Are we in and everything we need to be at the church? Are we doing everything that we can do, everything that God wants us to do when it comes to the church? If we're not mentally or physically here each and every service, we're not all the way in. Plain and simple. Uh, we said it, in is not a halfway word. You're either fully in or you're not. That's it. There's no halfway there. Well, yeah, I attend every Sunday, but are you doing everything that God wants you to do? And maybe he is. Maybe you are. Wonderful. That's all. You're doing everything God wants you to do. That's a great, great place to be. That's a wonderful place to be. But have we truly thought and say, yep, that's, that's everything I need to do? How many times in the last few years, as our pastor mentioned, talking about, uh, you know, we'd be more than happy. If you can't come and go out on Monday nights, we'd be more than happy to pick another night that works for you. I've yet to have anybody come up and say, hey, Brother Josh, you know, I, I can't go on Monday, but is there any way we can get a group on Thursday? Man, there's some people around here, it's a blessing. There are some people in here, I believe if we said we were going out Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, they'd be there all four nights, Brother Moore. I believe with all my heart some of them would be. So you might think, hey, yeah, but I might be the only one. Well, have you bothered to ask? Hey, this Thursday night works better for me. Can we do it? Sure. I'm guarantee you somebody would probably be more than happy to go with you. 
Hey, can we go? We used to go Friday mornings, I know, one time. Hey, can we go Friday mornings? I'm sure there would probably be a group that would go with you. Are we truly in where we need to be with the church? And can I say this lastly? This is a big one. Are we truly in when it comes to making a stand? Brother, uh, we've heard people talk about it today, and you see everything that's going on in this world. There's coming a day that we're going to have to make a stand. This world wants nothing to do with what we're doing here tonight. I don't want to say the world, but most of the world wants nothing to do with what we're doing tonight. You can see that just by the amount of churches that no longer have services on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night. You can see that by the amount of so-called churches that are supporting everything that goes on in this world. You can see that by the amount of churches that I've seen this week that, that hosted some different groups and things like that that are nothing more than an abomination to the Lord. Can I say, I was thinking about this this week. Uh, uh, you know, Brother Ron, you talked about this morning a little bit about abortion. You know why we don't look at certain things uh, uh, the way that we should when it comes to the Bible? Because we've changed all the words. We, we've made it feel better ourselves. You know, if you, think of, if you think of adultery, well, we've called it an affair. Right. You know, because affair just seems a little bit worse. We think of abortion, we call it abortion, when truly it's just murder. Right. Plain and simple, it's murder. But we don't want to know that we murdered something, so we'll just call it an abortion. Right. You know, we want to call it just a little white lie. No, it's a lie. It was still a lie. You can call it however you want. Your fish might have been this big and you said it was that big. It's still a lie. You're still lying before God. Right. You know, I just, I just took, you know, I just, you know, whatever it may be, I just took something from somebody. No, you stole it. You didn't just take something. You stole it. But see, we have a world that wants to change all that because they want us to believe that all that kind of nonsense is okay. And all that just leads down to continue to snowball to where they want nothing to do with what we are doing. And there's coming a time we're going to have to make a stand. And you need to ask yourself, are you going to be all in? Sure. See, because if we're not all in on all these other things, when it comes time for us to have to make a stand, we're not going to be all in on that either. When it comes time that they may come and they may tell, hey, you're going to have to shut the doors. Are you going to be willing to take a stand and say, no, we're not? There are things that have been in place and things that have gone through many, many a times uh, that even have seen recently a certain places uh, that have tried to make this a hate book. And if you preach out of it, it's nothing but hate. Can I say you might not have paid attention, and, and I, by, I know by no stretch of the imagination is this man perfect, and I'm not trying to say he is. But if you don't know, Donald Trump was convicted this week in order to pay 300 and some million dollars in New York. What did he do, you say? Well, he supposedly lied about what his property or something was worth, got a loan from the bank, paid that loan back early, and they say that he lied and called damages and ordered him to pay 300 and some million dollars. I believe between him and his two sons, it's over 400 million dollars. I say that, you have to understand, things don't run the way we think they used to. If they don't agree with your politics or they agree with the way you believe, you be agree with the way that they believe, they don't care and they'll stop at nothing. If they'll do that to somebody who's a billionaire, what are they going to do to us? What do you think they're going to do to us when they come and tell you you can't preach or you can't have church services or whatever it may be? Are you in and willing to make a stand? Because there's a lot of little kids in here that if the Lord don't come back, their future is going to depend on what we are willing to do their future is going to depend on just truly how in we are their future is going to depend on how much willing we are willing to make a stand and if we're not in where we need to be we're not in the will of god we're not in in our fellowship with him we're not in what we're doing for the church we're not going to be willing to be in and make a stand we're just not going to be we're going to fold under the pressure why do you think it is? I hear, I listen to preaching every week uh, all across the country that talks about how many churches still aren't open up on Sunday nights or Wednesday nights. Because once they stopped for COVID, they just never started back up. Now we can set and point finger at them all we want. That ain't going to get us anywhere. Are we willing to make a stand when it comes to us? How in are you? In is not a, is not a halfway word. That Bible does not tell us in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, as I alluded to, all around the beginning or sometime in the beginning. No, it says in the beginning. It is a, 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 an absolute word, in the beginning, God. Are you in? 
Are you in tonight? Are you in where you need to be, or are you just going through the motions and you're just waiting and biding your time to get to wake up one day in heaven? That's not how God wants us to live. I'm just as sick of everything that goes on in this world as you are. It's just as frustrating as you are. Brother Ron, uh, you know, Brother Ron talked about it this morning. If you have to deal with the public and deal with all those nice people, I'm just as sick of some of those people as you are, especially some of you that deal with them on a daily basis way more than I do. But as much as we may want to go home, as much as we may want and look forward to going to heaven, he hasn't come back yet. So if he hasn't come back yet, we need to be in. How in are you tonight? Ask Brother Clint and Brother Daniel, come get a song of invitation. Just ask yourself that tonight. How in are you? How truly in are you and where you need to be? Or are you just going through the motions, biding your time? Are you truly in everything that you need to be in? Because I'm afraid sometimes we just go through the motions, we do what we think is right, but we're not really in. And it don't take much to just get us off course. It don't take much. I've, I've said this before. Why should you not skip church? Why is it important not to, you know, lay out a church? It gets very easy. You, you decide that this is just me maybe thinking, Brother Ray. You decide one day you're just not going to go this Sunday. And all of a sudden, Wednesday, you have car trouble and you can't make it. And then the next Sunday, you're sick. And then the next Sunday, before you know it, then you'd already planned a vacation and you're gone. And now all of a sudden, you're not been for a month, Brother Moore. Then it's easy just to skip. And then all of a sudden, it's easy. Now we've gotten wrapped up in the world because we wasn't in at the beginning. How in are you this evening? Our great grace of Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask you to speak to hearts during this invitation. Lord, help us, Lord, to examine our lives, Lord, and how truly in we are when it has come to the things of God. How truly involved are we in when it comes to the things of God, Lord? How much do we truly desire to see you do a work, not only in our lives, but even in our church and in our community, Lord? I ask you to speak to hearts during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.